Welcome back to Boss Battle Analysis. I hope you all enjoyed the first two episodes for Dokkan Battle. Today, inside of Episode 3, we will be covering Dragon Ball Universe 2's Ultimate Fusion Unleashed Raid Boss. And yes, which at the time of this recording, it is still out. But it may be gone by the time this video goes up. However, it'll return sometime in the future with only reward changes, most likely. But moving on, for those unfamiliar with this series, this series is pretty much breaking down specific boss battles inside of various Dragon Ball games. This includes for Xenoverse specifically, the HP, the key, stamina, attack, defense, super soul, and everything of that nature for the boss character. Plus, if applicable, some possible tidbits of trivia. In addition to all of this, we will be covering the stage the fight takes place on, the rewards, and other possible various outgame festivity. Once again, if applicable. Without any further ado, let's jump into the rewards first. So, for at least participating in the raid at least once, you'll earn yourself 50 TP medals and a common Hercule badge. For hitting 5,000 damage, you'll earn yourself 50 TP medals and a new nickname called More. Undeniably a marvelous nickname. I truly couldn't think of any other nickname I'd want more. <laughs> Hitting 15,000 damage will earn you 50 more TP medals plus artwork 159. Check it out on screen. Hitting 30,000 damage will earn you another 50 medals and a super soul called I Think I'm Finally Warmed Up Now, which belongs to Vegeta and has the following effect. Credits to you Nozomaki Xamasu for posting it to Reddit. But after time, after the battle starts, it boosts all of your attacks by medium, activates auto key recovery, and boosts movement speed by large. Hitting 50,000 damage will earn you yet another 50 TV medals in artwork 231. Check it out on screen. Hitting 100,000 damage will last but not least earn you 50 more TP medals and the nickname Avenger for the 50th raid in a row, yippee. All in all, you'll be getting 300 TP medals and a bunch of supplies. Honestly, pretty solid reward for just doing damage. However, completing the quest normally by surviving the 5 minutes or managing to take down the boss's sliver of health, you'll earn 1,000 XP and 500 zenny with a multiplier plus a TP medal. For losing, you'll earn 40 XP and 20 zenny with no multipliers and no TP medals. All in all, solid reward. Now for the fun stuff. The stage and ball. The stage takes place on destroyed planet, the volcanic wasteland area, which, fun fact, it looks like this raid was supposed to take place on the glacier stage. If you take a look back at the trailer for Legendary Pack 2, you will notice that in the clip for Gogeta, the map is the glacier instead of the volcanic wasteland. Now for Gogeta himself. Gogeta himself doesn't have a life bar and instead has an ever-changing and evolving set of health, usually ranged in the million. The health goes up every single time you kill him up to level 99. So, Gogeta starting at level 1, he will start with 600,000 HP, aka 60 life bars. He has 700 key and stamina, aka 7 bars. He has 7.0 attack, which is 7 times higher than the default 1.0. Plus, him starting transform doesn't sound like much, but from what I hear, this Gogeta Super Saiyan works differently than the other Super Saiyans in a way which increases all his dealt damage by 30%, which is insanity. You will get one shot, if this is true. He has 2.0 in all defenses, which means he takes double the damage. His AI table is 315, which is second to the smartest AI possible in 316. He has Super Soul 197, which is impenetrable super armor. Nothing, and I mean nothing, will break or phase it. His skill set consists of Kamehameha, Punisher Drive 1202, which is an exclusive one to Dragon Ball Super Gogeta, which starts out with Soaring Fist, and then it drives into the attack itself, no pun intended, Super Mad Dance, Shine Shot, Warp Kamehameha, Meteor Explosion, Vanisher Guard, and No Charge Key Blast. And for his Awakening Seal, he has Super Saiyan 1160, once again, exclusive to this Gogeta. I believe it increases all his damage by 30%, which, once again, is crazy. Fun fact, this Gogeta has the same moveset as his roster counterpart, other than the fact that Warp Kamehameha and Meteor Explosion are actually in inverse position. Normally, Meteor Explosion is in the X slot, but here it's in the Y slot. Plus, this Gogeta doesn't have a charge key blast. Take note of the 65535. See? That means empty. That covers the boss in terms of strategies. I personally found using Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Gogeta, and his Super Kamehameha boost effects seriously racked in the damage for me. But I recently started a new save and was attempting this at a level 20-ish character, so I doubt that is the most effective strategy, because I really didn't have any characters unlocked at the time. But from research, and by research I mean scrolling through Reddit, I hear Bending Kamehameha and Emperor's Death Beam are all super solid options. Mix that with some of the fighting poses and other utility-based skills, you will find the perfect setup. There's really eons of builds to hit the 100k mark. Just make sure to stock up on capsules maybe healing limit burst because this Gogeta's 7x multipliers, mine with the Super Saiyan 1 multiplier, means plenty of one-shots will be handed out at discount prime. But guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Boss Battle Analysis. I know it's short, but truly that's all there is to cover. I don't want to waste too much time talking about fluff and non-boss related topics. Because this is a Boss Battle Analysis episode, I want to inform you guys as much as I can about the bosses themselves. But I will see you all in the next episode or next video. Have a great night, everybody, and see you all next time. 
Just joking, there's one more fun fact I'd like to share. If you know normally, when you transform inside of Xenoverse 2, there's a little symbol under your name that shows you're transformed. However, if you look at Gogeta's portrait, you'll notice it doesn't show he's transformed. This is because he has the Super Saiyan skill in his Awakening slot instead of his Ultimate slot. If he had the skill inside of his Ultimate slot, it would show he's transformed. Just a little fun fact for you guys. Alright, I'm out here. Bye.